Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're looking at a brand new version of Lightroom that just dropped. And this is Lightroom Classic version 14.4. So there's updates to all the Lightroom family and Photoshop and Camera Raw today as well. But I'm, in this video, we're just gonna be looking at Lightroom Classic. So let me get right to it. There's a couple of big new features in this. The first thing, and it's a pretty big change is if you've used raw details or denoise before, you know, you, you right click on the image and you go and select enhance. And you can see enhance is gone. <laughs> it's not with us anymore. So they have changed it. And what was previously in the enhance, so denoise, raw details and super resolution is now non-destructive. It no longer generates a separate DNG file and you can find it right here in the detail panel. So let me show you how this works now. So here we have an image that's pretty noisy and this is from an old Nikon D90, so you can see it's quite noisy. And if I want to just do denoise, all I have to do is toggle denoise. Um, it still has to calculate like it did before, but it no longer generates a separate DNG file. And not only that, but um, once you've done the initial calculation, you can actually adjust the amount afterwards. So. As you can see, that is much better. Now, the only thing is you still can't do denoise and super resolution on the on the one image without exporting it first. Um, to get around this, you have to export it as a TIFF and then apply super resolution. And I have a whole video about that, which I will link in the description below. So if, say, for example, you're a Fuji user and you have used raw details in the past to improve the Fuji demosaicing and get around some of those issues like the warm artifacts, uh, you can now just create a preset with this and apply it on import and it will apply to all your images and you don't have to go through the process of generating separate DNG files. It will still have to calculate on import, but you don't end up with two separate files. So um, I've done this already, so it's not gonna have to calculate, but if I just turn on raw details here, you can see we have improved demosaicing. So if I turn this off, you can see it's that little bit softer and some of the details are a bit more smudged. Um, this is probably not going to show up very well on video, but you get the idea. And if you're a long time Fuji user, I'm sure you know the advantages of this. Um, so yeah, so the workflow for Fuji user now, instead of having to import everything and then convert everything to DNG, you can now just create a preset. So let me just do that. We create a preset, we have denoise and everything on, and let me just, uh, let's just put this anywhere. <laughs> I'll call this import create and now when I'm importing files I can literally just select that as an import preset and it will apply to all my images so as you can see it's a pretty good improvement now the only thing is I'm not entirely sure where the information is being stored I haven't seen any documentation from Adobe on this however uh, I'm recording this video I'm using the pre-release version so once this is actually being released I'm sure that information will be out there so that's it on the Enhance. Um, it's a big improvement, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody will have some complaint about this, but yeah, it's definitely a better solution than having to create a DNG every time. The next new feature we have is they have, had, they have added the ability to remove reflections. Um, so this was previously in Camera Raw. They have added it to Lightroom as well, so you can do this without going to, to Camera Raw. Um, that's pretty impressive, so let me just give you a demonstration. So we pop over to the Remove tool, and if you look down here now, we have Distraction Removal. And we select Reflections, just pop this out, and hit Apply, and give it a second to calculate, or in this case, nine seconds. And look at that, the reflections are gone. I mean, that is pretty impressive. So you have, uh, there's a couple of options on this. So you have um, Quality, Preview, Standard, and Best. I normally just leave it on standard. Um, best takes a long time to calculate and I don't really notice much of a difference to be honest with you. Um, so you also have a slider and this slider goes negative. So if I bring this back to say zero, that's where we started with. But if I go to negative, we end up with just the reflections and not the actual image, which is pretty cool. Um, I've no idea how they're doing this. I don't know if, if it is AI or not. I think I read somewhere before that it isn't AI, but um, Either way, it's pretty impressive. 
So in this example, I'm shooting through a window at something, but um, it works quite well the other way as well. So if you're, say, inside somewhere and you're shooting out and you've got reflections, um, it can be a good way to get rid of them, even if they're quite subtle. So let me show you another example. So in this image here, pop over to the develop module. So um, I took this from the lift at the top of the Battersea power station in London. So it's like a glass lift and I did my best to avoid reflections, but you can see there's still some here and here. Um, and it's quite subtle, but it's actually difficult enough to get rid of that with um, traditional tools. So we'll pop over to remove. And again, we'll apply our reflection removal, let it do its calculations, and voila, it is gone. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so that is a very useful tool. Um, it kind of works sometimes with water, um, but only if you're looking straight on. It won't get rid of like reflections on a lake or something. Um, okay, so the other thing they've added in distraction removal is um, the option to remove distracting people. <laughs> so let me give you an example of that. Uh, I don't think this works as well. Um, it's a bit hit and miss, but let me show you anyway. So I'm gonna pop over to the develop module again. Um, let me go to remove. And if we go down here to people, um, as soon as you toggle this, it will calculate where all the people are. And then you just hit remove. So this is using generative AI to remove it. It's basically, it's like a batch for um, the remove or the generative erase tool. So I have found um, with trying this, it can be a bit hit and miss uh, as with the generative erase tool in general. Um, that's not actually a bad effort, but you can see it's missed a person here. Um, and if we zoom in here, you have the usual problem with generative erase and that you have like a resolution mismatch on stuff. And yeah, so like I said, it's a bit hit and miss. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't get people as well. So let me just give you another example. Um, if I pop over here to this image. Um, so with this kind of thing where you're kind of more down at people's level, I find it, it doesn't work as well. So if we pop over here again, and here you can see we've selected the people, but as you can see, it's, it's missed a bunch of people and how it decides who gets removed and who doesn't, I don't know. So we'll hit remove. Okay, and again, it's remove people, but you can see it's like, <laughs> it hasn't. <laughs> it's just replaced it with other people. Um, if you click on an individual point, you can then go through the variations for said point. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's very hit and miss. Like in that example, it's just replaced it with different people. Yeah, so that's kind of the major new features in this version of Lightroom. There's a couple of small things as well. Um, they've added native tethering for Fujifilm cameras. And they've also done the thing where, let me, um, let me just, let me just go find a folder and I'll give you a demonstration of this. So they've added this function where it will remember your selection um, in uh, a source. So whether that's a folder or a collection. So let me just select a few files here. And let me just select these and let's say I go to a different folder and then if I go back to this one you can see they're now still selected. Now this has to be enabled in the menu first. It was disabled by default in mine but again I'm on the beta version so it's possible this will be enabled by default. So if I just go into preferences and you can see it's in file handling and in file selection remember last selection from source during the session. Um, presumably that gets reset when you quit. So there we have it, um, some big changes in this version of Lightroom, particularly if you have used denoise or super resolution. Um, this is now a totally different way of working and in my opinion, much better, but we'll see, we'll see what the community thinks. Okay, uh, I hope you found this useful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, see you next time.